Hey there, welcome to Made It, where we are constantly trying to facilitate your medical journey, making it easier than ever. Did you know that questions longer than having 60 words are no more asked in CE exams? Never heard of it? It's written in the official page. Well, it can be beneficial for you if you know these little facts. So we have brought you this video on how to approach to an MCQ question in the common entrance examination. So do watch the video till the end so that you don't miss the important tips and tricks too. And yes, thank you so much. We recently achieved 1000 subscribers due to your immense love and support. Keep it coming like that. Do subscribe if you like it. There was an agreement or the general consensus during formulation of the syllabus and about the MCQ question that each MCQ should not be made up of more than 60 words. So the interesting fact about MCQs from CEE is that it can have maximum of 60 words and not more than that. And a tip I would like to give you is that don't run after practicing very long questions that are cumbersome to read itself. However, you can solve them for the sake of knowledge but keep in mind that you won't be asked questions that appear as paragraphs. Another really common thing most of you might have already noticed too but still I want to tell you people is that most questions are set on the basis of past year's question. Yeah, there are certain most repeated questions which you have to focus on much much while practicing MCQs. And every year there are a lot of such past questions that keep repeating over and over. So keep this thing in your mind that about 60% of the questions in the question paper are from the previous year's past questions. And you can't afford to do mistakes on those questions if you want a good position either for a scholarship or a good college. New past questions. You might be wondering how a new question is a past question. Sounds strange, right? You'll understand soon. Apart from the past questions and the normal type of questions, we sometimes might have encountered some strange type of questions that are not more than two or three in number. Have you noticed them? If you've noticed those mind-boggling questions that drain the hell out of you in the exam hall, let me tell you my personal experience that those questions are taken from nowhere else but mostly from NEAT. So those new type of strange questions are taken from the NEAT exams. Let me tell you a fact. Your institute book, let's say of the name or the vibrant, is a collection of statements from past questions either from your own country or from the neighboring country. If you think this is an entirely new question, do look at the past question from the other exams where you'll find that the question has already been asked. So if you're someone with a high aspiration of scoring a lot of marks or don't want to miss out any question, I suggest you to go through such competitive exams past question so that you feel familiar even if you don't actually get it in your exam. This is probably the most important part of the video. If you follow this pattern, I'm pretty sure no trick by the question setter would defy you in choosing the correct answer. The first step is read the question carefully. And in course of reading the question, underline the clues which you think are important for solving this particular question. This will make sure that you don't miss the clues after you had read it once and got a gist about the question. The next step is stay calm and think. And after doing those above steps, it's time to look at the options. Sometimes you see the options are quite eye-catching and take the same one without properly reading the question demand and end up making a blunder. So first of all, read the question and then read the options. You might have waited a long for this exam to happen. So what's the rush? Give time and then tick. Play with the clues and analyze with what knowledge you have and tick the appropriate answer. And yes, the encircling part. People often try to do it at the last few minutes in the exam when there is a huge rush and complete panic situation and later they commit a serious mistake. Ticking the wrong answer or even ticking the right one but ticking at the wrong number. And this not, does not only end here. 
Now they'll tick the subsequent questions in the same wrong place. This is also a reason why people complain of not getting an expected mark. So while encircling the answers, make sure you're encircling the right option and in the right question number. Sometimes the questions and the options both can easily help you out to answer the correct answer. All you need is a wise thought with the wise guess. Guesses are important in multiple choice questions and feel free to guess when you know nothing about the topic. With nothing, I really mean nothing. Since you have the privilege of giving wrong answers without negative markings, you cannot afford leaving any question unanswered. So here, the wise guess comes into play. The first step will be to exclude the irrelevant options so you have a less crowded room for answers and it will funnel down the probability of your right answering. Now you might have seen some questions having this type of answers and this is a really common encounter. So basically when you know nothing and are running out of time, you can use a trick. Use the common and the most repeated part among the options. For example here, 22 is common between A and D and 32 is common between A and B. But other options don't have that much similarities. So if you go with option number A or 22.32 in this situation, there is a high chance that you'll hit the right bush in the dark. Not only with numbers, there are some word pairs in which similar situation can occur. Now yes, the pitfalls, which the question maker will try to make you fall if you walk blindly. So underlining words will work. There are these some eye-catchy words in the options. Never get fancy of them and answer without reading your questions. You might regret in few minutes. Negative words. It can be as simple as no, not, to as hidden as except, at the last, or sometimes with a but. And these words entirely change the question demand and you'll just take the opposite one if you miss it. So do underline such words, such that in course of thinking, you don't forget those negative clues. The next is read the preposition carefully. 5 kz increased to 6 kz and increased by 6 kz are entirely different. The first one means that 1 kz is added to 5 kz and the sum is now made 6 kz, but increased by 6 kz means 6 kz is added to 5 kz which makes it 11 kz. So now you can figure out why they are different and important, right? Time management Time management is a crucial part as you have limited time for the questions. So start from the easier and then switch to the harder ones. Personally, I had shared in the previous video too. And according to my experience, I used to find biology easier. So I used to start biology and then chemistry and then finally I would solve physics. And the most important way to conquer time management is to rehearse. And by rehearse, I mean to practice it time and again. Set a timer of 3 hours and imagine you are in exam hall and practice the MCQs. Give most of your time in MCQs practice rather than reading those theory part. If you finish all your MCQ questions, you will definitely be able to cover all the theory by itself. Since I told you already where the lines and sentences are being borrowed from to make those modules. They are all the past questions made in an affirmative sentence. Here, we end our video. If you have any tricks or suggestions which we might have missed, you can comment that in the comment section and we'll feature them in the future video. Hope you liked the video. Do subscribe, comment down your queries and you can also message us personally at made it for you on Instagram. This is Made It signing off. Made it, made it for you.